Welcome to my couch. This is an educated talk show. If you can dream it, you can do it. So today's episode is going to be super excited because we have a very special guest today. He is one of the most anticipated academic professional in the education industry in Sri Lanka. So he is a doctor by profession holding a MBBS and has dedicated his entire life in building a higher network of high quality educational institutions across the island. And also he is also the architect of setting up the TISSL. What is TISSL? The International Schools. So now welcoming our guest, the chairman of Gateway Group of International, Dr. Harshalas. Good morning, doctor. How Good are you morning. doing? I'm all right. Thank you. Doctor, we all know your father was a very prominent uh, figure in Sri Lanka. So what is like to grow up as the son of the famous and legendary Mr. R.I.T. Alice? Okay. Tough question to begin with. <laughs> Starting. Because I think I have had uh, uh, a kind of a total experience under Mr. R.I.T. Alice, who is my father first as his second son and then as a student of uh, the school that he built and then taking over another school that he founded. So as the second son, I think uh, I must say I couldn't have had a better father, uh, an example uh, in everything that he did. He didn't partake any alcohol, no gambling, everything was the family and uh, being a principal uh, and a teacher, I think uh, uh, it was tough for them, but I think I, he gave his 100% to the family. So that is something that I learned. And uh, thereafter, I still remember, uh, you know, when I started schooling, uh, he was abroad and my mother was teaching at Royal College. So she enrolled me to uh, Royal College even though DSN Anayaka had been just started and uh, I think uh, DS started in 1967, I started schooling in 69. So when my father returned from Cambridge, he was uh, very disappointed that I had been enrolled at Royal, Royal College, College. <laughs> and uh, he had, you know, a few conversations with me and one day he told me, uh, Puta, if uh, my school is not good enough for my son. How could it be good for others? <laughs> uh, would you like to uh, change? I said yes. And at year five, uh, I shifted from Royal to DES. And I still remember moving from that red brick buildings to a Kajan shed, which was my uh, first classroom at uh, DES. Uh, and thereafter, I grew up uh, as a student uh, in a school where he was the principal. And he made it a point that, uh, uh, again, as a principal, that he'll set the standards. So I had very little uh, uh, space for any kind of error. Uh, but on the other hand, I also had the responsibility of living up to his expectations in everything that uh, I did, be it the academics or co-curricular or for that matter, discipline. I still remember one day when I was reprimanded in school by him, uh, and those days reprimanding was done in a different manner uh, for not taking an excuse letter from home when I was absent from school. So that was that. And uh, thereafter, uh, when he uh, started Gateway, uh, I was a medical student, but I'm happy from day one I have been able to work with him and uh, kind of uh, develop the organization, probably playing a very supportive role and uh, later on obviously when he had to slow down I had to take over the reins uh, but I think all in all uh, my father I think is a very well-known educator and I always knew that uh, fitting into his shoes will be very challenging uh, but I tried my best uh, but I also uh, thought that you know he came from a state school background and the values and the culture that he brought in everything was so rich 
but uh, I also had to not just follow that, make sure that I carry those values forward, but at the same time, you know, shape uh, the organization to meet future challenges, bring in technology and do whatever developments that had to take place. So, uh, you know, probably fitting into his shoes is, has been challenging, but all that I can say is that I've tried my best. Thank you, Doctor. So the next question uh, about your family. So what kind of support from your mother, family, and your, especially your wife, uh, what's their contribution? See, my father is the one who is known to the world, but my mother, who is also an educator, she was a teacher and the founder, vice principal of uh, President's College, uh, and uh, obviously worked at uh, Gateway as the managing director. Uh, he, she was the stronger person. Uh, my father was, in fact, a very soft person. Yes, I think the, she proved herself, especially whenever the family faced any calamities. Uh, I still remember when my younger brother died, uh, we all were really down. But it is she who kind of, you know, steered the ship and make sure that uh, kind of, you know, we got over that situation because it was a complete shock to all of us. So she's been always a, a very strong person. Uh, played a massive uh, supportive role to my father in all that he did and also very strong in you know certain values discipline which i think we've kind of got from her uh, very much and i think uh, uh, she's had a major influence on uh, the uh, sons uh, especially in that aspect uh, well my wife uh, i must tell you has been very supportive in everything that i did and uh, what I'm doing even now, uh, she was a teacher to begin with and she went in for early retirement, but uh, she didn't have any retirement because she joined Gateway. And, uh, uh, you know, I generally work 24-7 and, you know, basically I'm always trying out new things, whatever. And if I didn't have that understanding and support from her, I couldn't have done, uh, you know, half of this. So that way she's been very supportive uh, and I can't, you know, have any complaints about my support from the family. Rest of the family, uh, you know, my younger brother uh, left us uh, when he was only 17 plus. Uh, so I think uh, as the remaining two sons, me and my elder brother had more responsibilities. And uh, my elder brother, I think our personalities are different, but we have a very deep connection, especially again, when there is any kind of difficulty and uh, I know that he'll be there for me and I'll be there for him especially at times of difficulty so superficially we may not be the people who kind of uh, who will be seen to be you know uh, you know real buddies but deep inside I think we have a strong relationship so you have a very cherished family doctor so uh, the doctor now you have studied medicine as your first degree so now you are pursuing a completely different field. So could you tell us how uh, important it is for a person to choose their first degree? What's your opinion? I think in today's context, first degree is immaterial. And I think children should be given the freedom to simply select what they like. But going back to my medical days, basically when we were students, uh, if there were uh, professions which were kind of hopefully acceptable to society they were either medicine engineering or law so very little choice and uh, in fact I like medicine I must tell you and uh, the group of friends that I had all opted to do medicine so we simply got carried away and uh, we all did medicine uh, I'm I think the only one out of medicine now, but they are doing very well, the others, all are consultants. Uh, so basically, uh, uh, I think when I started doing medicine, I had a very you know, little idea, <clears throat> but later on it grew. So somehow uh, uh, towards the latter part, again, there was social in, uh, uh, you know, issues in uh, the country. Universities were closed for three years. So that time I got even more involved with Gateway and I had a serious problem in getting out of it because I had to complete my degree. 
uh, and thereafter I did my internship in Anuradhapura, I remember. Then I joined the medical faculty and I uh, was a lecturer there. Uh, I did my PhD while, was, while I was in the medical school. Uh, so I probably got a total experience of medicine and being an academic as well. So uh, I think I like that profession, but later on in my career in medicine, I realized that if you are to be a medic or an academic, you can't be doing anything else. You got to be totally committed. And if you cannot give that commitment, I think it's good to walk away. Because uh, I mean, even in the latter part of my career as a lecturer at the Colombo Medical School, I had only two lectures a week. I could have easily done that and somehow carried on further. But back in the year 2000, I realized that I was not doing justice to my academic work or research as well as the work at Gateway. So that's the time I had to take a call. Uh, so looking back, no regrets. I still remember work, doing my internship in Anuradhapura, which was a very tough uh, uh, place, especially during the war. I remember I worked in the surgical ward. Uh, but still, you know, because I was in Anuradhapura and completely out of Kalambu, uh, and because I was away from Gateway that time, it was a total commitment and I really enjoyed Okay, So, but uh, so that's what was available and I took it at that time. So the dedication and commitment of you is the most important. It's important. Yes. It's important. And doctor, uh, what do you think, how important is school uh, education for children? What's your uh, opinion on that? Well, I feel school is the most important uh, uh, place for a child next to home. Uh, any child would kind of spend at least about 13 years in a school okay? and uh, the research shows that most amount of learning takes place when they are you know when they are in their first probably seven eight years of their life okay and much of it is spent in school as well okay kindergarten school whatever uh, and school is a place where you learn all the skills Right. And uh, it is sad now, you know, if you take the corporates or the business world, they all, you know, work so much with universities and try to kind of really change the mindset of uh, students of the universities and do what not. But little do we realize university would be only three to four years. Exactly. Okay. And all the values, all, uh, I mean, the necessary discipline, all that has to be inculcated in school okay so to me school has to be that place which shouldn't be like a tutory okay it can't be just concentrating on academics sadly that's how the schools are going now because schools should prepare for university as well as life okay so today if you take broadly i'm just uh, making a general comment you look at different schools, state schools or private schools or international schools, you'll see some schools just being concentrating on university. Their total concentration is examination results and sending them to a university. There are some schools which are not very, you know, concerned about academics, but very good in sports and co-curricular activities. Okay. So their main concentration is probably about big matches and whatnot. Okay, but we want to do both. I think it's important that you kind of look into both aspects. Thank you very much. So this is the end of our first segment. So we are moving on to the second segment of today's show. It's all about present and future. So when we talk about Gateway International, how did Gateway International School came into being? Okay, I told you my father started DES and uh, you know, after some time he was moved out of DES uh, for reasons unknown. And uh, then uh, he had a short stint at even Zaira College as the Director of Studies. He also, I think he did some uh, good work. Uh, and uh, later on, uh, you know, there was a little lull period where, you know, 
he was completely out of everything and the family didn't have any income and uh, he then you know was forced to start something on his own and uh, he started what was called gateway institute of advanced studies back in 1986 that was in effect a tutory but uh, that also he did it in a different way you know, small classes parents meetings uniform and what not uh, so we went on like that later on i think my father was recalled to ds while uh, gateway institute of advanced studies was going on uh, i was studying medicine my mother was also working so none of us was there none of us were there full time but around 1995 he retired because he by that time had become the state uh, secretary for education also so he retired from that i had graduated and uh, my mother also had retired so around 1997 we thought we must start a school so that's how we started gate to international school back in 1997 but then we were in a converted house where gate to institute of advanced studies was there so we had to start from there and uh, develop the organization to where it is now mm-hmm. interesting so doctor uh, we all know that uh, singhalese is our native language so english is a must it's kind of a second language so how important is learning the english language uh, and the entry to international schools i mean international education for sri lanka see we need to kind of understand reality i mean english is spoken all over the world and uh, basically if you take all modern tools whether it's a web or you know whatever kind of uh, communication tools available much of it is in english and moment you go out to the business world everything is in english so we can't live in isolation uh, having said that singhala is a beautiful language tamil is considered to be a beautiful language unfortunately we haven't learned that enough okay i think we must do our very best to kind of preserve that okay and learn that learn those languages also to the maximum but i think it's nothing but fair that children are given that exposure to learn english to communicate okay it's okay even if they make mistakes i mean you know world around if you look there are many countries where you know people speak uh, the so called broken english but they still speak english okay so that's important and i don't think it should be limited to just a segment like the international schools but i think you got to broad base it so gateway as a pioneer school in learning uh, international education so how did uh, we all know that pandemic has exacerbated uh, all over the regions countries so how did the pandemic uh, situation physical education transforming physical education to e learning platform So how did Gateway as a pioneer school uh, uh, ta- you know, face to those challenges pandemic challenges See in general I must tell you me and my team we like to be a step ahead we try our very best okay in our own humble way uh, and uh, prepare and anticipate things not that we ever anticipated a pandemic but we knew uh, the learning was taking a different direction and in that uh, bringing in technology for education was very important so much long before the pandemic we had started doing this and uh, we were the only microsoft showcase schools in sri lanka there were at that time about 225 in the entire world so we were the only one in sri lanka uh, when the pandemic hit us so already we had uh, kind of uh, started uh, using teams but it wasn't the case where everyone was using teams it was only a selected few so i still remember uh, 12th of march uh, when this was going on i called the secretary of education and asked him are you planning to start uh, close schools and he said yes from tomorrow we will be closing uh, so immediately we uh, i was in colombo okay immediately i summoned a meeting of the entire staff in kalambu and uh, had a brainstorming session and uh, everyone unanimously said uh, let's go for microsoft teams and at that point i think uh, especially in our country a good majority didn't know what teams was for that matter not 
even online learning but most of our staff they knew so we had that discussion but then i said i still remember it can't be done by just a few i want our entire 550 teachers entire staff to be engaged in online teaching and learning so that was a challenge so from that day within a week we had day and night training sessions and got everyone up to speed and uh, from the following week we started online teaching so we didn't waste much time much time okay then came the challenge of uh, data and devices because some parents were complaining saying that you know they were not having uh, devices then even some teachers had problems so teachers we were able to send our own computers to their places in case they didn't have and they also had if you seen these uh, data so interesting times uh, i spoke to uh, supun the head of uh, dialog and uh, asked him to work out a package for the gateway community we he was very helpful and gave us an attractive package okay and uh, basically then we spoke to the entire organization teachers students and said okay uh, dialog for a very special rate will come and install okay uh, they are kind of routers if they want to take so there was a huge demand over a thousand people uh, requested and they went to their homes and uh, Uh, kind of uh, set up the routers and they were all fine with uh, connectivity and data right and we worked out a very attractive data package as well then i think even the school chipped in a little then came the devices now that was a more difficult thing so i spoke to hewlett packard singapore and got a, again a special rate and uh, the laptops i said no you have to deliver so because people couldn't go out right so anyone who wanted the laptop Uh, we were able to deliver them to their residences and also with credit card companies i think with about two or three companies we worked out 24 uh, uh, installments no interest to pay for the laptop so within a few weeks i think the entire gateway community was you know really doing a super job then came the decision okay uh, should it be just lessons only we said no we need the whole school wholesome school experience okay uh, because this happened in march april we usually have our aurudu celebrations and may we used to have besak celebrations so we then kind of had virtual aurudu we had virtual besak i remember still uh, the then minister of education liked it so much he even put some of the material in the ministry of education website and then we later had virtual uh, uh carols right then the sports department was without work okay and so in microsoft there is this program where you could record right and share so what the, each sports person the trainers were trained to use this and students were asked you know you give a little uh, exercise or a skill to learn they had to do it at home record it and upload it so the coach looks at and says okay you need to do this differently that differently above all all the other students were also able to see this and learn from mistakes so we had a fantastic online program so much so that when school started you know there were times where basically it was a little risky because pandemic was not really over okay there was a huge demand from parents no please don't continue your online program but we have told everyone very clearly physical school will never be a substitute for online online is okay for temporary work okay but nothing like physical school so every opportunity we had we got back to physical school and i think that's our success at gateway so gateway got the challenge and gateway uh, faced it, the faced the pandemic as the positive way very good i think pandemic has done a lot of good in many ways to me the best that has happened is there was a huge gap between the teacher and the student because the students are very quick to grasp technology teachers you know take time and this made it possible for teachers to come down to the level of the students right and i think when all were on the same platform you know 
that has become interaction has become very good so pandemic has done a lot of good as long as we are able to carry forward those messages that is what is important when we're talking about talk technological advancements so what technological advancements in education do you foresee i mean in generally see like uh, technology will continue to kind of offer new things okay uh, people have been speak you know talking about online school okay for even you know uh, before the pandemic and now that discussion has got to a new height and people are kind of even uh, opening online schools or whatever so technology is always a tool there's no doubt about that but we have to understand that you know physical activity physical interaction simply does not happen you know if you have anything online okay i mean uh, uh, so whatever you do i think uh, technology will advance bring in new till i mean you are talking about augmented reality virtual reality all that is very good right but not at the expense of you know uh, compromising physical education so to me uh, education will i mean uh, have more and more features coming from technology which is good you need to have them you need to embrace them but don't ever think that you know the human face can be taken out of it taken out yeah exactly right and a uh, final question for the second segment so in this pandemic era doctor what new skills uh, do students need to acquire to face the challenge uh, of the future so what yeah. do you think i mean pandemic was just a uh, uh, phase but overall i think moving forward i think uh, education itself and learning itself has to be taught in a different manner in the sense uh, i think people may call it uh, 21st century skills some even microsoft has you know so many c's such as communication collaboration creativity critical thinking all these are important right all these are important because uh, i think uh, academically the knowledge and the exam results i would say would be important you can't do away overnight okay but i think what people have to understand is that overall development there is no point in having all the academic qualifications if you haven't got that other aspect of you know where you have developed your personality and that comes from sports co curricular activities so all that is very very important so the skills that the children would need would be in unfortunately many skills of it are not in the textbooks okay i mean good example is gateway has started a program called the founders award because our founder mr alist believed in that uh, rounded education so we brought in this program where the founders award is not an exam it's something that they have to complete while they are in the a level class okay you can complete the entire thing within 14 months and that has four aspects volunteering internship skills and sports and adventure so we refer it to as visa so volunteering they have to go and work in places help people they can even help a younger student internship whatever field that they like they must go and do a short internship they all can be done during school vacations okay so they have four school vacations that they can work skills and sport they can learn a new skill maybe playing an instrument okay and sport trying out a sport that they had not played before an adventure the entire batch goes on an overnight uh, expedition so they have to complete the program for them to graduate from gateway okay now these are things unfortunately that are not there in the textbooks okay then other things like soft skills right and uh, where do we teach children but you know especially with your experience okay in working with uh, uh, international working in international forums meeting people how important those things are okay where do we kind of teach children about dining etiquette okay how to dress now all that we have done through a program where we do during the secondary school okay how to dress our dining etiquette everything now these are things that has have to be given by a school 
and as i mentioned they have to be taught i mean obviously they have to communicate well so that's important whatever language they communicate with okay the politeness the professionalism is important then you cannot work as individuals in this world you have to collaborate right more you collaborate the better it would be okay and you have to think out of the box okay i mean if you are just a traditional thinker i'm telling you even about gateway right i think that's our success we try our very best to uh, think and do things out of the box okay and of course critical thinking to make right decisions at the right time take risks okay sri lankans are, sri lankans are very scared to take risks but you have to take risks in life okay i mean nine times it will work once it may go wrong but that's fine so that's the kind of uh, preparation i think that the children would need thank you very much doctor so uh, we got some very good inputs and very interesting uh, segment uh, so uh, this is the end of the second segment we are moving on to the third segment this is my favorite segment so uh, in this poll you can uh, choose some interesting uh, we have some interesting uh, questions there so you can pick uh, some of the questions but you can't see it i'll read you the questions okay Okay, Doctor Soya. First question. So you have to answer with the first thought that comes to your mind, Doctor. All right. So that's the challenge. So your first question is, what did you want to be when you were small? Well, I have no answer for that. I I must be honest. Uh, I never had any plans of a career or a particular profession. And even now, I'm I don't plan for probably ten twenty years, but I plan short term, uh, maybe. uh what i maybe i'll have a broader plan but when i was young i never dreamt of being a doctor or a educator uh but possibly education was in my genes so now we are moving to the second question okay. so second question doctor who is your biggest inspiration that of course i must uh, confess that it's my father i mean uh, he's been my biggest inspiration inspiration and uh, i from very young days i learned i read much things uh, he did so if i have to name one person i can't think of anyone else so the third question right so the third question name one thing you would like to change about sri lanka good Sri Lanka I think is a blessed place uh, but I think we got to think and act differently we got to get out of this colonial mentality uh, we have to believe in ourselves so I would like Sri Lanka to think differently have confidence and just do what you think is right to do in the most uh, honest manner but just don't be followers be thinkers and the next question <laughs> we have to move right the next question is what is motivates you continue your career uh, i think every day i could try out something new try out something different and uh, i think that is the biggest motivation i have and in education you can do so much as long as you are committed to your task uh, what i think sorry to say this i'm just always sometimes i think okay uh, what it could have been if i was a medic uh, i feel i feel i would have been confined to a box okay but here every day is a new day and every day is a day that you could look forward to so that's what i love in this career thank you doctor so last but not least a final question right final question what is your favorite game or sport to watch and play well cricket is the sport i played the most when i was at uh, bs 
and I played for medical school as well. Uh, didn't continue thereafter, but uh, that's a sport I love and I always try to watch. Uh, you know, my younger brother was a brilliant cricketer. Uh, my good friend Aravind, uh, I think, has had a major influence. So I think cricket is the most uh, popular sport and the sport that I love. Okay, uh, that was the interesting segment for today's show. Thank you very much, Doctor. Thank you for valuable time and uh, amid your busy schedules, you joining with us with a very short period. And thank you very much once again, Doctor. Thank you very much. It's been nice talking to you. Thank and, you, Doctor. Uh, I wish uh, this program every success. I think uh, from what I have uh, heard and read, it's going to be something very useful for the young people. I think they all need direction and they all have to find purpose in what they do. And I'm sure it would be uh, programs of this nature that would assist them. Thank you, Doctor. So this is the wrap up for our today's show. Stay tuned with us. This is an educated talk show. <laughs>